This is Shelly Kraft coming to you live on SNN Live. We're coming to you from the Sprott Symposium 2018 in Vancouver, BC, Canada. I have with me today Brent Cook from Exploration Insights. Brent, welcome back to SNN Live. Thanks. I was glad to see you, Shelly. So, Brent, I want to start off by asking you what's going on in the uh, resource markets. Well, like much of the world right now, it's pretty chaotic. Uh, base metal prices have been coming down rapidly the past month since this whole tariff issue came about. Uh, the stocks themselves are languishing. Uh, but looking further out, I think what's important to keep in mind, what I'm really excited about is that we know the major mining companies are not finding enough new deposits, enough new ore to replace what they're mining. Consider for every pound of copper they produce, if they don't find one, they're going out of business. So that's a real key here, is that we're seeing these uh, companies start to go out and acquire assets, quality assets. And the junior mining sector, the ones that are finding them, all we've got to do is own the right ones and identify them, because they're real cheap right now, and wait for the takeout. And that's going to happen. It is happening. So I'm pretty excited. You know, we've known each other a while, and you predicted this event taking place of the majors running out of resource mm -hmm. to mine. That's consistent with what you've said. Now, how does this affect all the base metals, if you would? Well, I think what it, 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 it may actually put a squeeze on uh, the metal prices if there's not enough supply. Uh, certainly what it's going to do is make the deposits that are found, the new deposits, much more valuable. And we're seeing that right now with uh, London Mining taking, tracking out Nevson Gold, or Nevson Mining, for their project in Serbia and Eritrea. We've seen a number of instances this year where a major mining company comes in and takes out a, a junior company that has an asset that they feel is worthwhile. So we're going to see that happening regardless of metal prices. And in fact, I think metal prices being low like this is going to instigate a lot of this acquisition activity. Now, you're a speaker at the conference. What are you speaking on? Basically that. And then I'll be laying out a couple of companies that I personally own. That's what my newsletter is about, is companies I own, what we're buying, selling, and avoiding. I'll be speaking about those companies and giving some of the uh, participants here uh, a few ideas on what I think is worth buying at this stage in the market. Is there an essence of looking more closely at project generators, or are, does it matter? I mean, uh, how, do, how do you know? How do you pick the ones that you want to talk about? It's a long process. I mean, I've got 30-odd years of geologic background. I've been, I've been to 60-odd countries, looked at hundreds of deposits and projects. So I've got that experience. So to me, it's, it's number one, it's the geology. Is the geology conducive to the development of a major uh, deposit? Once we're there, okay, what's it going to take to actually find this? What, how much money is it going to take to prove or disprove a concept? Is this management team capable of doing it? Do they know how to not just geologically but financially run a company? So there's a lot that has to go right. And we've made good money in the letter on stocks that eventually failed because we recognize something at this, at this level. This looks like it might work, but as we follow the results, we start to say, here's an issue, here's a fatal flaw. The stock share price is up, we sell out before it collapses again. So we've, you, know, you can make money both ways on a failure or a success. You just have to be very, very diligent. Does this give you an indication that there's actually more value in an exploration company today than there is, let's say, on a producer or a development company? For a producer, there is much more value in the exploration companies right now. Uh, in terms of you know, valuing companies themselves, it comes down to you know, what's, their, what's their cash flow, are they profitable or not, and what, what is their asset. So that's individual. So, but on, an, on exploration companies, their exploration, their drilling, it's money out the door. It's not any money coming in yet. Right, that's why you need to be very, very careful that when you invest in these companies, make sure what they're drilling, the work they're doing, confirms your thesis, your investment thesis, or geologic concept. If it doesn't, just get the hell out of there, quick. Are exploration companies able to raise money in this market? Has that freed up a little bit? It's been tight. It's been very tight. I mean, companies are doing it, but again, for the most part, money is now going to the better companies and the better people. A lot of the 
garbage, a lot of the low grade, small, whatever, they're not getting financed. And that's, that's a positive too, really. Is there a, a wave of mergers and acquisitions coming? I, no, I don't think there's a wave because there's not that much quality out there. But the few that are, quality will be acquired. So when your investors are reading your newsletter, what are they looking for in particular? Just to follow what you've done as far as due diligence on projects? Or is it something that they gain so much information that they can compare it to, the, to their own thoughts and their own uh, essence of their own research? That, you know, Joe Mazumdar and I, we, we write this together now. And that's, that's our long-term goal. I mean, we talk about, we bought this stock because of X, Y, Z, and we think this is going to happen. The results come in and we like them or we don't like them. But we go through more than that, hoping to give them, our subscribers, uh, insights that they can use on their own when they're evaluating their own results. A company coming to them and with a drill hole. They can say, I, I recognize this from something that Brent and Joe said, and I can evaluate it. So that is our ultimate goal, is educating them as well. So what would you say to someone who's not a traditional metals investor? <laughs> Be careful, but uh, and buy my newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> Brent, speaking of Exploration Insights, let's give your website out there for our investors to get more information. Right. Uh, the newsletter is about Joe Mazunder and myself are buying, selling, and avoiding in the sector. Website is explorationinsights.com. There's a lot of free information there. Uh, and if you've got questions, you can contact us. So go to the site and have a look. Ladies and gentlemen, Brent Cook, Exploration Insights. He was one of today's Wall Street views, and he's a speaker at this symposium. This is Shelley Kraft coming to you live on SNN Live from the Sprott Symposium 2018 here in Vancouver, B.C., Canada. Thanks, Brent, for coming on. Anytime. Thanks. My pleasure.